All right, boys and girls, Bungie has released their dev article on the weapons we will be getting for Into the Light between Onslaught and the new social space with Shax. And they've discussed and shown what the perks are going to be in columns 3 and 4. And we'll have double perks in them or a chance at them, which makes this legitimately a game changer, I feel like. Because some of these combinations are pretty nutty, which is kind of the point of this video. Basically going over what I think will be god rolls for these weapons and things you should look out for when uh, Into the Light drops. Now, before I get started with the perks, just a quick note. Uh, it's just going to be background footage for this video. It's just going to be random Destiny gameplay. I will put up the perks of the weapons when I get to each weapon. But other than that, feel free to just listen instead of watch and just go alt tab and play a game if you'd like. Anyway, so with that being said, let's get started with the weapons. Number one on the list for them is Forbearance. As you guys already know, I'm sure Forbearance is one of the most dominant weapons in the game that we currently have. Available from the Vow of the Disciple Raid as a Waveframe Arc GL. And it's coming back with very similar perks with a few changes and also a key factor of not having Soul Drinker on it. But the Origin trait that it will have now is also very good. It's just not a healing perk, so keep that in mind. With the perk combinations, here we go. Third column, we have Unrelenting, Stats for All, Demolitionist, Ambitious Assassin, Surplus, Steady Hands, and Disruption Break. And in the fourth column, we have Wellspring, Golden Tricorn, One for All, Bait and Switch, Chain Reaction, Rampage and Desperate Measures. So right off the bat, you may have already noticed, it still has the perk combination that current Forbearance has in the game, that being Ambitious Assassin and Chain Reaction, and these perks will be enhanceable come final shape. So you can essentially just get what Forbearance is now, minus Soul Drinker, and that's probably going to be the go-to for most people, but I want to point out that there's some perks that you can put on here that current Forbearance does not have and that you might enjoy putting on instead. For example, instead of Ambitious Assassin, you could put on Demolitionist, which Forbearance currently does not have. I believe the only other Waveframe that does have Demolitionist right now is Undercurrent, the baby Forbearance that comes from uh, GM Nightfalls and Master Nightfalls, I suppose, if you want the regular one. But that might be an option for you as well, in case you have demo builds that you like to play with, and that could be a good addition instead of Ambitious Assassin. You could also consider Unrelenting, maybe, in that column, instead of Demo or Ambitious, just in case you do want some healing in your forbearance and you don't own the original with soul drinker that could be an option too now as for the fourth column is there anything that i would replace chain reaction with at least right now in the current sandbox and just to be completely clear and honest no i would not none of these perks stand out to me as something to replace chain reaction with because chain reaction does exactly what it's supposed to do you shoot at trash mobs you make them all explode and you kill everything in your path rather than you know golden tricorn which is very gimmicky and hard to set up and waveframes aren't exactly damaged dps for bosses so i wouldn't put anything like one for all or rampage on it anything like that so that's basically my analysis for forbearance you want chain reaction and then you want one of the three that i mentioned above with it depending on whether or not you have the original and if you have a demo build etc so let's move on to the next weapon next is succession now i don't know why they even added this into the loop pool to be honest or rated weapons in general. It just kind of feels odd to add a weapon from a raid that you can still currently get and craft into a red border 5 out of 5 pattern. I don't know, it just seems weird, but you know, it's here, so let's just talk about it. So in the third column, we have Moving Target, No Distractions, Left From Gold, Reconstruction, Firmly Planted, Demolitionist, and Discord. And in the fourth column, we have Snapshot, Redirection, Recombination, Vorpal, Focus Fury, Fire In Line, Box Breathing, and Desperate Measures. So, there's a lot of perks that uh, this gun already has in the current base game, and anything that was added it does not really stand out to me, again, in this current sandbox. You can still go for Reconstruction or Left From Gold. I feel like those are the top two perks in Column 3. And then in Column 4, Recombination, Vorpal, Firing Line, or even Focused Fury, if you enjoy that perk, but I personally don't. That's just me. It's pretty cookie-cutter and almost identical to what we currently have in game, so I wouldn't really... Go out of your way to farm this unless you've never done Deepstone Crypt and you don't own the Sniper, then you can. But otherwise, just stay clear of trying to go for this specifically. Up next, we have Falling Guillotine. This is where it starts getting silly with the whole purpose of having two perks on the third or fourth column and how these combinations are just going to run rampant. This sword is just going to be the best sword maybe outside of Bequest in the game instantly and just making everything else a mockery, including the Slammer, which we literally just got a week ago. So, this new version of Fallen Guillotine can roll the following. Column 3, Vorpal, Relentless Strikes, Repulsive Brace, Frenzy, Attrition Orbs, 
Chain Reaction, and Duelist Trance. I think the only perk in this column that's legitimately useless, in my opinion, is Duelist Trance. In the fourth column, we have Surrounded, Whirlwind Blade, Destabilizing Rounds, Eager Edge, Bait and Switch, Sword Logic, and Desperate Measures. So with the whole double perk thing in mind, let's just think. In column three, you can have both Vorpal and Relentless that you can switch between whenever you want, or maybe Chain Reaction and Repulsor Brace, if you'd like that as well. In the fourth column, you can switch between Surrounded and Whirlwind Blade, or Eager Edge and Bait and Switch, if you'd like. Or you can mix and match, where you can just have Relentless and then any column in uh, any perk in column four, or you can have Surrounded plus Vorpal for double damage perks on your sword at the same time. The possibilities really are endless. Well, not literally, but you get what I mean. Just the fact that you can have double damage perks on and, you know, pump out extra damage just like that is pretty cool. Or if you want to just swap to Eager Edge in between transitions in, like, a dungeon or a raid when you're going from a jumping puzzle to a boss, you can do that too. So, very, very good sword and highly recommend trying to search out a god roll for this. Following that, we have Recluse, the best SMG this game has ever seen from Forsaken. In the third column, we have Feeding Frenzy, Enlightened Action, Subsistence, Threat Detector, Repulsor Brace, Hipfire Grip, and Dynamic Sway Reduction. In the fourth column, we have Master of Arms, Target Lock, Frenzy, Destabilizing Rounds, Surrounded, Tap the Trigger, and Desperate Measures. So, my immediate thought is don't go into this thinking that Recluse is going to be the absolute monster it used to be back in its prime time. I don't think it's going to be as good as that. They specifically mentioned that they're also tweaking Master of Arms to not be as good as it previously was. So that's also a point of uh, disinterest in this, depending how uh, how badly they nerfed that perk. I think it'll still be a great uh, SMG, a void SMG in the game, and it can roll all the good stuff in target lock, subsistence, etc. I just don't think it's going to be a standout like the rest of the weapons are in terms of just like, oh my god, this is this is just insane. I want to use this in everything in the game everywhere. You know what I mean? So I would look out for, of course, Master of Arms, target lock, subsistence. Uh, repulsor brace, but don't get your hopes up too high. I would say keep them, uh, keep the expectations uh, at a low. Now for the other terrifying duo from Forsaken, the Mountaintop. This, I think, is going to be very, very, very interesting. Between being able to rocket jump with this GL and then using skimmers or eager edge swords, I think utility-wise, this weapon's already going to be really fun. But let's talk about the actual perks that you're going to want in this weapon. So Mountaintop, the third column, it can roll. Ambitious Assassin, Impulse Amplifier, Demolitionist, Lead from Gold, Slick Draw, Auto Loading Holster, and Overflow. And in the fourth column, we have Rampage, Vorpal, Adrenaline Junkie, One for All, Harmony, Recombination, and Frenzy. So immediately, what sticks out to me in column four is Recombination, as you'll have an elemental weapon in your energy slot, and you can stack up kills from that, and then get Recombination to 10, and then fire Mountaintop. That probably piques my interest the most. As for other perks aside from Recombination, your best bet's probably going to be Frenzy or Adrenaline Junkie. I just don't see Rampage, Harmony, or One for All having any use at all. And Vorpal's alright, but it's worse off of a damage perk than the other two that I mentioned, so keep an eye out on those. As for the third column, you've got Ambitious, Impulse, Demo, Left from Gold, Auto Loading, or Overflow. Any of these could be good on Mountaintop, depending on the situation and what you're doing specifically. Like in a boss damage phase, you can have an auto-loading one, where you just keep one shot out, go to your heavy, and then rinse repeat. Or you can just go the overflow route and have a ton of shots in your magazine. Or just keep ambitious, where you just shoot one shot, kill something, reload, then you have two shots. You really just can't go wrong with any of these. It just depends on what you're doing in the game as an activity. Now we move on to the Black Armory stuff. So first up is Hammerhead, a fan favorite LMG, a void one in a heavy slot, of course, that people wanted for quite a long time, and it's finally back. So let's take a look at what the columns have. Third column, we have Feeding Frenzy, the Stabilizing Rounds, Envious Assassin, Rampage, Four Times the Charm, Wee Woo Rounds, and Under Over. And in the fourth column, we have Surrounded, High Impact Reserves, Target Lock, Onslaught, Killing Tally, Desperate Measures, and Tap the Trigger. So right out the gate, in the third column, I can tell you you're going to want one of three perks in this slot. It's going to be either Envious Assassin, Four Times the Charm, or Wee Woo Rounds. If I had to list them from one to three, I probably would say four times, then Wee Woo, and then Envious, but honestly, you cannot go wrong with any of these. In the fourth column, same thing, you have three perks that you want to go for, those being Target Lock, Onslaught, and then finally Killing Tally in that order from one to three. Target Lock is by far the best in this slot, I believe, especially if you're going with four times 
slash Weeboo Rounds. Then Onslaught because of how hilariously fast it can shoot after you get a couple of kills. And then finally Killing Tally if you want to go the traditional route of just being like an ad clear uh, LMG for just trash mobs. Now the other Black Armory weapon is going to be Blast Furnace from Season of the Forge. This weapon, I, I'm not I'm not sure really like if it's going to be a PvP or a PvE weapon, but I'm not a PvP player, so I'm going to stick to just recommending a PvE role for this. Feel free to recommend a PvP role if you think it's going to be good for that in the comments. But for now, let's go over the columns. Third column, Zen Moment, Snapshot, Shoot the Loot, Keep Away, Perpetual Motion, Kinetic Tremors, and Headseeker. And then the fourth column, we have Kill Clip, Firefly, One for All, Frenzy, Rampage, Rapid Hit, and Desperate Measures. So if I was looking to make this a PvE staple in my inventory, I think I would end up going the route of a perfect role being Shoot the Loot and Kinetic Tremors in the third column if possible. If it's only one, I would probably pick Kinetic Tremors. And in the fourth column, I would go with Firefly and Frenzy. And if I had to pick one, it would be Firefly. Now we arrive at the star of the show. And I can't even believe I'm saying this, but th the meme has gone full circle now. Edge Transit, one of the most memed weapons in the history of Destiny. Arguably maybe one of the worst heavies upon release in Destiny as well is now going absolutely nuclear and I think it's going to blow away every other GL in the game and that includes Cataphract and Caraxes. This thing is getting some insane perks on this weapon, so let's go over them. The third column, we have Chain Reaction, Cascade Point, Impulse Amplifier, Fuel Prep, Ambitious Assassin, Ambitious Assassin, and Repulsor Brace. Now, I think Bungie also updated this later on to say uh, Ambitious is actually not on it, and it's instead going to be auto-loading holster, so just keep that in mind. And in the fourth column, we have Frenzy, Destabilizing Rounds, Deconstruction, One for All, Bait and Switch, Full Court, and Explosive Light. So, maybe you already noticed this, but in the third column, you're going to be able to get Cascade Point, and also possibly get Envious Assassin in the same third column tree. This means that you can have Envious on, get 3 billion shots in your mag, then switch off Envious to Cascade Point, still have all of those shots in your mag, and then shoot like 20 shots in a row in the span of like 5 seconds. That is insane! Legitimately bonkers! It, it might look like you're actually cheating if you're gonna play with a blueberry, and you fire all 20 shots in the span of like a couple of seconds, they might report you. That's how ridiculous it's gonna look. And then in the fourth column, I mean, l let's just not beat around the bush. The top two choices are clearly going to be bait and switch as the unanimous number one and then explosive light for people that may not like to do the swaps for bait and switch but bait and switch by far and away with cascade point and envious assassin or maybe auto loading in some certain boss fight situations far and away the best role that you can get on this weapon and it's going to be absolutely bonkers then we fall back down to earth in the next weapon which is luna's howl now this is almost certainly going to be a pvp weapon which again not the pvp player so not going to comment on that but if you were going to use Lunas Hal in PvE because you don't own any of the other really good hand cannons, that being like Sunshot, Zuli's Bane, Fatebringer, or the next weapon we're going to be talking about, then the recommended role that I would go with for this is going to be Heal Clip in the third column and then Incandescent in the fourth column. Everything else is really just mostly PvP, maybe Subsistence here and there, but I don't think Subsistence on a hand cannon is really all that great. Uh, Precision Instrument, okay, not really that great on a hand cannon. So Heal Clip in the third column and Incandescent in the fourth column. I think Heal Clip is really, really underrated, even in PvE, not PvP. And then Incandescent has just always been a good staple for solar-based uh, builds. So those two are probably the combination I would go with if you're going to be using Luna's Hal. Then the next weapon, another hand cannon, Midnight Coup. Used to be the OG, you know, go-to hand cannon in the game when Fatebringer wasn't still there. Anyway, now they've added new perks into this weapon, so let's talk about it. Third column, we got Outlaw, Firefly, Shoot the Loot, Explosive Payload, Moving Target, Attrition Orbs, and Enlightened Action. Now in the fourth column, we have Rampage, Kinetic Tremors, Zen Moment, One for All, Frenzy, Opening Shot, and Desperate Measures. So obviously, it's much stronger than its original counterpart. Now it actually can stand up to Fatebringer. So I think the ideal situation you're going to have in column three is rolling two of these three perks being Firefly, Shoot the Loot, and Explosive Payload. If you're just using it strictly as a great PvE hand cannon, I think just Firefly and Explosive Payload, maybe together if you're lucky, will be the go-to. 
but if you have like a niche use in the game for when you're doing content like let's say gms where your teammates are making constant heavy with like cenotaph aeons etc then you can go with like explosive or firefly preferably explosive i think and then the second perk would be shoot the loot that way you can just shoot the loot the ammo to you and get free heavy without having to actually walk to get it and in the fourth column i think the basic straight up choice is going to be uh, kinetic tremors it's by far the strongest thing in this pool I know some people will say one for all is 35%. Why wouldn't you want to have that? I personally just am not a fan of using a primary to shoot three different targets to get a damage buff. I'd rather just shoot one target and then everything explodes around them and be done with that. That's just me personally. You can go one for all if you'd like, but I think Kinetic Tremors is by far the go-to in column four. And finally, to close out, I think we have the two most underwhelming weapons, that being Hung Jury and it being the 18th time it's been re-released. I don't really hate Hung Jury, I just think the aura of that weapon has been taken away just because it's been brought back so many times. But let's talk about the perks anyway. Third column, we have Weaver Rounds, Enlightened Action, Kinetic Tremors, Rapid Hit, Shoot the Loot, No Distractions, and Loot Change. And in the fourth column is One for All, Cascade Point, Box Breathing, Firefly, Precision Instrument, Desperate Measures, and Explosive Payload. So in the third column, I think it's pretty straightforward what you'd want. Kinetic Tremors, and then followed by a second perk if you get it would be we will rounds or shoot the loot exactly for why i mentioned the earlier one in uh midnight coup and then in the fourth column you're definitely going to try to get one of firefly precision instrument or explosive payload or if you're lucky you probably get one of explosive or firefly and then precision instrument on the other because that perk is actually i think kind of underrated right now it depends you know the meta that's going to be in final shape and whether it's going to be like a ranged meta, close meta, etc. So keep an eye out on that, but that's my choice for Hung Jury. And then finally, we have Elsie's Rifle, aka the Stranger's Rifle, from OG Destiny. So I personally don't see much from here on a PvE scale. Maybe PvP players see something here, I don't know. But for PvE, this is what we have. Third column, Feeding Frenzy, Zen Moment, Repulsor Brace, Loose Change, Keep Away, Under Over, and Weeboo Rounds. And then fourth column, Adrenaline Junkie, Frenzy, Destabilizing Rounds, Kill Clip, Desperate Measures, Desperado, and Head Seeker. By the way, in case it wasn't obvious already, I I, I know it's Rewind Rounds. I can read it. it I, we just say Wii Rounds because it's funny. Anyway, this weapon seems really, really underwhelming for a PvE weapon. I think Wii Rounds is what I would go with in the third column. And then in the fourth, maybe go with Desperado or Destabilizing Rounds. I honestly, I don't know. You could go with the combo of Repulsor Brace and Destabilizing, I suppose. You can go that route. Or have Repulsor and Wee Woo on third column. But yeah, like overall, it just does not seem all that great. Maybe I'll be wrong, who knows. But that is my analysis of these weapons going into the light. And that's it. Let me know what you guys think. What are you going to go form for when Into the Light drops? Do you have anything specific in mind yet? And what do you guys think about them adding some uh, new twists on classic weapons as well as bringing back a couple of raid weapons? You already know my two cents on that, and uh, I'm curious to see what others think. Anyway, if you don't know what to comment in terms of uh, weapon rolls, then you can simply comment Into the Light. Feel free to also subscribe. It does help the channel. It's much appreciated. It helps fight that YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.